In the not-so-distant future, your landlord might be thousands of different people. Home ownership as we know it is shaping up to be a whole lot different, and it's pretty concerning. You know what I am? I'm a man who owns a hell of a lot of properties. Real estate investing has always been a key tool to building wealth, and over the past couple of decades, we've seen a dramatic rise of regular folks using the asset class beyond purchasing their own home. In the wake of the 2008 crisis and the now Airbnb bust that many hosts are currently experiencing, it seems that the promise of real estate being a passive income stream for regular folks hasn't always worked long term. However, emerging startups backed by big names are challenging how retail investors approach real estate. The problem is that for retail investors, they're putting too much equity into one property and when things go south, they don't have the diversification to protect themselves. Another problem? Far too many people can't even afford one home. I live in Manhattan, dude. So how do these startups solve these problems? Fractional real estate. Fractional real estate is where you can buy a portion of a home instead of the entire thing. Depending on the platform, you could be a partial owner of a home for as little as a cup of coffee. Companies such as the Jeff Bezos-backed Arrived Homes have raised over 76 million to purchase more than 200 properties. The company and its competitors all contend that what they offer is truly passive income, unlike other supposed passive income streams such as Airbnb that are a lot more work than you might think. With fractional real estate, the claim is that your investment is completely hands-off as the management and fees of the properties are taken from your share of the rental income. These platforms aim to make it easier for people to invest in real estate as it's usually quite challenging to enter. Buying a home requires a large upfront payment and it takes time to meet the requirements and finalize the purchase. Additionally, managing a rental property can be costly and labor intensive, particularly for new landlords. The idea of fractional real estate is that people locked out from the housing market can profit without taking on mortgage debt. So is the mortgage that much of a life goal? Well, 99% of everything done in the world, good or bad, is done to pay a mortgage. So perhaps the world would be a better place if everyone rented. Then why don't you rent? Hmm. Well, I rent as well. Really? Yeah. My son and uh, his mother and her boyfriend live in my house and I live in my apartment. Fractional real estate is also partly fueled by the perception that home ownership is unattainable for many young Americans. It's argued that this way, at least they can offer some access to financial benefits associated with owning property. Brian Frazier, CEO of Arrived Homes, reported that over 40% of the company's investors are renters themselves. Is that a good thing though? It seems to be more of a sad reflection of people being unable to afford a home. My name's Puggy and I live in a tree. These companies are adding more negative perception that housing is a means to generate profit rather than a basic necessity. This has negatively impacted both rental rates and the stability of housing for millions of people. With varying levels of wealth, market knowledge, and experience, this new wave of retail investors may just make it all worse. In general, there are two ways for someone to invest in real estate. Buy a full property and rent it out, or invest in a real estate investment trust that diversifies across different real estate assets. Some fractional real estate platforms do offer clients a portfolio of properties, but the trending ones like Arrived Homes allow retail investors to choose individual properties. While this allows for more choice, it also means potentially higher risk for retail investors without the same resources as professional investors. With the convenience of having a company handle the property purchase, improvement, listing, and management all comes at a cost. Fractional real estate charges many fees to the investor. Always a catch. For example, vacation rentals on arrived homes have property management fees of up to 25% of all rents and fees earned from the rental. Whether the high fees are worth it or not depends on the returns. Arrived homes, for example, paid out $1.2 million in dividends in the fourth quarter of 2022. Annualized yields of the 192 properties last year ranged between 2 and 7.9%. I mean, it's alright, like... Overrated as fuck, in my opinion, I mean... Fractional investing in real estate is not a new concept either, having been around for decades, especially when it comes to commercial properties. Various platforms, including Arrived Homes, Fundrise, Lofty AI, and Landa, 
all offer similar models for fragmented investing in different types of real estate markets. The popularity of fractional investing, however, has exploded recently due to companies' unique spins on the business model. For example, Lofty AI sells fractional property tokens using cryptocurrency providing not only investment opportunities, but also serves as a marketplace for home sellers. While it's neat technology, some contend that fractional ownership in the real estate market is a lot of smoke and mirrors and isn't the best use of your dollars. The model works for commercial real estate because it's usually much more expensive and requires institutional investors with more capital and knowledge to band together. However, fractional ownership for retail traders is arguably a way for companies to collect fees without promising much. Your fractional investment in a home is usually not liquid, meaning it's hard to sell your stake whenever you want. Real estate investment trusts usually offer investors far more exposure to real estate assets as well as significant diversification as they are usually being publicly traded on a stock exchange. REITs are also highly regulated to protect investors and also have an equally low minimum investment requirement. It's funny, fractional real estate companies are trying to sell the idea that picking and choosing what specific homes to invest in is better than owning a basket of diversified real estate you would find in a REIT. This is ironic given that in the stock market, the exact opposite is true. It's unlikely an average Joe would long term be able to personally pick stocks that would perform better than a diversified index such as the S&P 500. The same is likely true here as well. The trick is not to pick the right company, it's to be, because most people aren't equipped to do that and plenty of times I make mistakes on that. The trick is to essentially buy all the big companies through the S&P 500 and to do it consistently and to do it in a very, very low cost way because costs really matter in investments. Uh, if, if returns are going to be 7 or 8% and you are paying 1% for fees, that, that makes an enormous difference in how much money you have on retirement. Even if you were to diversify by purchasing a fraction of a bunch of properties, the fees would likely eat into your profits significantly more than a traditional REIT would. It begs the question, why would anyone pick the fractional model over a REIT? Yeah, you're right. You're right. I'm an idiot. Fractional ownership relies on the American dream of owning property, even though it's not really the same thing. Owning a home is often viewed as the cornerstone of middle-class financial security. With that becoming more out of reach for many families, investing in a fraction of a home isn't the solution to the issue. If anything, it's a slap in the face. Rather than having homes only accessible to those willing and able to invest a much larger sum of money, for some average Joe investors, they're just desperate for some kind of ownership. Despite better ways to invest in real estate, the fractional model might just fill that desire, and with any luck, they might just make a few bucks off it.